Okay, so here you go. Just in case you need a sip on it. Thank you, brother. Sip, sip. All right, all right. Well, we've been rolling for like the last minute. So um, here we have Danny Chang. Now she's an upcoming YouTuber. She's got a nice growing Instagram page and it specializes in relationship advice. Yeah. Mostly teaching women how to pick the right men. Seems like you kind of are teaching girls how to play the game a little bit, right? Well, tell me a little bit about what your, your channel and what it is that you do. Um, I wouldn't say it's just about relationships, like between male and female, but also about your relationships with your family, with your friends, and also your relationship with yourself, because that's the most important thing. Because especially for a woman, if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, mm. all of the other relationships in your life are going to suffer, especially the one with that potential mate that you want, right? If you're insecure, it's going to fail. If you're not, if you don't have your own things going on, it's going to fail. So I'm really just trying to promote healthy relationships in all areas of your life. Awesome, awesome. And obviously, I got my mate man joining us today. Tell me a little bit about yourself, brother. <clears throat> not much to say. I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Good, good. So, <laughs> be, <laughs> being that it's Halloween and everything, we felt like it was very appropriate to uh, to have the, the theme of the show being ghosting because it's all about ghosts, you know what I mean? Halloween, ghosting. What causes ghosting? Why, do people go Why don't people just say, hey, I'm not feeling you. I'm not interested. We're going to cover all of those things. So what, what are your thoughts in terms of ghosting? What, why do you think people ghost? What is ghosting? Okay, what, actually, good question. Say it again. <laughs> the main question here is, what is exactly ghosting? So dark, can't see a thing. I hear a song of the broken beat. Give me nickel, give me dime. Give me doll, I'll give you a smile. So can't see thing. Oh, a lot of people don't really know what it is, right? So let's see what you got over here. Is it too far? <laughs> too close? There you go, okay? So let's see what you think. Well, I think ghosting, honestly, is when someone that you're talking to and you kind of think things are going well and all of a sudden they just drop off. So you don't hear any more texts, you don't get any more calls, and you're kind of just wondering what happened because that, well that's what I, that's how i think of ghosting at least right and i know that at least everyone has had it done to them at least once and everyone's probably done it at least mm. once as well mm. right and there are various reasons for that and i think at some points it is permitted while at some points i think it's just wrong you think you really you think it's permitted? oh yeah at certain points yeah i think if i just went on one date with you and then after that date i kind of I'm just not interested at all. I don't think I'm obligated to pick up another call or text from you. Because at that point, you really haven't invested much in me. I haven't invested much in you. <laughs> it's a smart point. But what if the guy had really good intentions? He was a nice guy, mm -hmm. took you out on a date, mm -hmm. put the effort, paid for the bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't owe him anything. You guys are not attached. But it's in just like a decent courtesy mm -hmm. to say. Because at what point is it okay to ghost? Mm -hmm. And you know what? If the guy was truly a nice, decent guy, but I just didn't like him, I don't think I would have the heart to ghost him. But I might just say, or they sometimes even realize, they'll say, oh, you know what? Like, because they'll notice I'm not really messaging them that often. They'll be like, okay, are you not interested? And I'll be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not really that interested, but you know, thank you so much. And you know, you're a really nice person. And then leave it at that, right? The ones that I'm talking about that I ghost, <laughs> usually they were like... They were just whack, like either like because I've talked about this in previous videos, like either it's like the first date that they asked me on and then they didn't pay. Like, I'm not calling you back. Well, like, like, I'm not talking to you anymore after that, because for me, I for me personally, that is something that I think if you've asked me on this date and then you didn't pay because, you know, you always do the motion to your purse, right? Even though you don't like they shouldn't really let you pay, right? <laughs> That, that's a very good sign. Like, mm -hmm. I like to pay, obviously, the first date. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least that, you know, yeah. that motion that you go into your wallet. Yes. Like, no, but I, I got this. Don't worry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. What, what are your thoughts? 
I'm curious is, <laughs> have you ever made the motion and then he tested you to see if you do it and see how far you get before he stops you? Oh, shit. That's actually good. You know what? Um, I've actually had someone to the point where they actually like did not stop me at all. And then I said, okay, so do you want to go half, half? Oh, right? No. Because, but, but to be honest, that's not usual. Usually in most cases, the guy says, oh, no, 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 I got it. Right? But I know that guys like to see the motion and they want to see that you're at least willing and you're not just trying to, because guys don't want to feel like they're being taken advantage of and taken for a ride. And I get that. But at the same time, I think the first date you shouldn't be letting me pay, bro. That's that's like a warning sign that you cheat. You cheat. <laughs> okay. So what I want to know is this. What if you ask that person on the date? And do you ever do that? So why is there a stigma for a girl to ask a guy that they find attractive on the date for the first time? Um, I wouldn't, you know what, I would say that nowadays, I think that there's a lot of girls that would be willing to do that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If that's, if that's you, you know, if that's you and that's what you're on, I know a girl who made the first move and she's married to that guy now, right? Mm -hmm. That's just not me. That's just not something that I personally generally do. I will do things like in terms of my body language and looking at that person and letting them know that I would be open to them talking to me, but I'm definitely not going to be the one making the first move and definitely as hell not the one asking to go on the first date, but that's just me. <laughs> right? So I'm not really telling ladies that that's what you should or should not do, but that's um I guess how partially probably even how I was raised and just how I um have navigated the dating world thus far in that aspect. So a personal story. Oh, here, we go. <laughs> here we go. So I have a friend, a really good friend of mine. You could say that he's uh, used to meeting a lot of women, uh, women like him. But what I do realize is the people that he actually likes, the ones that maybe he's not even as attractive to, is the ones that come up to him. And the reason why, and I have, I understand his train of thoughts. I feel the same way as well. Mm -hmm. If you come up to me and you take the effort, mm -hmm. or you may be shamed and still do it, mm -hmm. I'll give you that extra time. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone who doesn't, mm -hmm. you're just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So maybe the new form of thinking should be closed mouth, don't eat. Oh. Which means if you don't go for it, mm -hmm. you'll never get it. Because okay. you don't have these chances to just pop up. Okay. Maybe that your chance right now, and if you miss out on it, mm -hmm. that little extra push for you to say, you know what, I want to go on a date with you, mm -hmm. or I find you attractive. Because mm -hmm. a lot of beta males over here, and the reality of it is, people are so scared of this rape culture mm -hmm. that they will not come up to you. Me too. Right? Sure. Not to mention, if I see you, and I think you may have a boyfriend, any respectable guy is not going to come up to you, even though you may be single. Just the way how you carry yourself, we won't approach you. Just because you appear to be, just because you appear to be, um, with someone. Yes. Because what you're standing next to a man, or just because of the way that you act, like because so I don't it, even understand it, that. It could be the way you carry yourself. Yeah, you know what? So, so I think a lot of guys feel the same way too. Mm -hmm. We can't. We don't have a radar on that says friend zoned, mm -hmm. right? We don't know if the if you're wearing a shirt that says this is not my boyfriend. And if I see you walking with a guy out of respect, I won't even look your way at all. Mm -hmm. Even though you may be looking at me, giving me the signals, mm -hmm. it could be I'm thinking maybe you're trying to cheat. Mm -hmm. And I don't want a girl who's cheating. Even though it's, you know what, I'm really, yeah. this is how we think. Yeah, right? So there's a saying, you lose them how you get them. Mm -hmm. And what that means is yeah, if I steal them from you, someone's going to steal you from me. Mm -hmm. So... I have to go at you in a certain way of respect. So if you're by yourself and no one's around you and you show me the signs, mm -hmm. you overly show me the signs because mm -hmm. some people read the signs wrong. Mm -hmm. and like, you know what? I think that she likes me. They make a chance and it doesn't work. Second time, they make a chance, it doesn't work. Third time, they're not making that chance anymore. So now they want someone to, to overly step, mm -hmm. just like my friend. And just like how I was as well. I needed someone to come to me for me to say, okay, now I know for sure that person's single mm -hmm. versus maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So the new, the new way things are because of rape culture 
it's scaring everyone into being a certain way. Yeah. So you people have to now these women have to adapt to it because wow. yeah, yeah, we you have to because you know what? The power is on the other side. So we can't really just jump there. Wow, that was a that was powerful, very powerful. I, I, you know, and it's why a lot of guys uh, rely on these dating apps mm. because it allows you to make that first move. Like Bumble. Like Bumble, it's 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 like an artificial because it's an unnatural weight on on meeting someone. But a woman is not supposed to make the first move; it's the guy. But we have this shift in society where women are super empowered, and it's nothing wrong with women being empowered. Is a false rape. Uh, accusations and they and they're just being, you know, catfish, uh, cat, catfish, cat calling laws and all there's all these things that just make guys really nervous. Mm -hmm. And also, we, like they don't want to be shamed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people exposing. You know, oftentimes on my Facebook feed, I see girls screenshots. Oh, this guy is so yeah. thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's a bit ridiculous right and um while i understand that this culture oh, while i understand that this culture is a little bit um i understand that for men being a little bit more hesitant with the current culture and with the whole me too and all of that stuff i can get that but then why not just ask you know hey you know how good evening like are you here by yourself you know why not still do that because for the same reason that your friend likes the girls that will approach him is the same reason i yeah. will like a man to approach me because out of the you know hundred females that are at this party or bar or whatever i'm the one that stood out to you you know so it's the same thing on both on both sides right so then why now should we be forced to do that okay <clears throat> great question so why why wouldn't he try and approach you the same way that you like to be approached the main reason for that is we're seeing you get approached a hundred times a day already. Okay. You're used to us approaching you. Mm -hmm. No matter what we look like, the car, no car, okay. short, tall, you're used to getting these things. Mm -hmm. We're not used to being approached like that mm -hmm. to show that you're going to go over the hump mm -hmm. where even though you can get a guy at any time of the day, you're going to try and make the attempt to get us. Mm -hmm. You can only respect that. It gives you, it, there's a point system guys have in their head, mm -hmm. whether they, they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. We may look at you a one certain out of 10, like maybe say you're nine out of 10 or eight or seven, mm -hmm. that automatically, at least for me, I know for him, it bumps it up too, right? Doesn't mean that, you know, we're all of a sudden gonna date you, mm -hmm. but we're gonna definitely give you the, the chance to, yeah. to shoot your shot mm -hmm. and, and then check your, your, um, your personality yeah. because there are steps that go along with meeting someone. Yeah. There's the, uh, the um, what's the beginning stage? That's the, the, um, the discovery stage, yeah. right? So I look at you, look at me. Okay, she's good looking. Okay, then we move on. How is her mind? How is her mind now, right? Uh -huh. So I talk to you. Okay, she's cool. Okay, we move to the next step, right? Uh -huh. And as you're doing this, you're qualifying someone to see if they're girlfriend material, of course. right? Just the same way that we're qualifying you. Exactly, right? But the problem is girls are always qualifying the guys. So we're always the hunters trying to get to get more prey. Mm -hmm. But now in this culture, we're tired of being these hunters because we're constantly trying, we're trying, and we're getting knocked down you know, it, all the time. Podcast, I just rolled my eyes a little bit yeah. because, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Being... Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, just, it's just one fact before I forget mm -hmm. that I read. Um, it said that bef by the age of 19, mm -hmm. the average female has been asked for sexual requests more than a male would have in his whole life, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. right? Like he, she's been asked for dates more than a guy would ever be asked. Mm -hmm. the He's guy. the normal guy in yeah. his whole life. Mm -hmm. If you're Chris Hemsworth or yeah. whatever, so that's different, different, right? Yeah. But yeah, that, that's a mind blowing fact right that there. Yeah. I, and I, I'm doing this uh, experiment. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. I created a fake profile okay. on a dating app okay. with fake female pictures. Just to see what the competition, not the competition, just to see how all the guys are yeah. and what a female goes through. Because we, we got to like kind of circle back to the ghost, the theme, which is the ghosting, right? Why do we get ghosts? Maybe they have too many options. Yeah. And they do. Like, I, I, so I have this app called Hinge. Yeah. 
and I do for a guy I feel like I do get likes yeah but when I created this fake female profile mm -hmm. in 10 minutes it was like 50 likes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was probably really hot girl you put on there obviously yeah it was a hot yeah, yeah it was a hot girl yeah, yeah. With those dating apps, like, let's be honest, it's all about, initially, it's all about looks, right? Oh. If you're hot, you're going to be getting a shit ton of likes because it's funny you mentioned that you're doing a video on that because I have already done some research for a video that I want to do on dating apps as well. So I've never used a dating app in my life because I, no, <laughs> don't say good because, no, no, no. I, I did now for this, but I had never because when I was still single, I was quite young. I was like... I was, when I was single, was like, you know, teenager, early 20s to mid 20s. And then I met my ex-husband, right? So, and then I was married, well, like, you know, dating him and then married for like six and a half, seven years. So basically there was a big gap where I wasn't even on the market doing any of that. So now that I've come out of that, going into this new dating scene has just been crazy. And just seeing how much has changed is completely different. So what I said I was going to do, I'm going to, I actually signed up for three dating sites. Oh. <laughs> Hinge, <Yeah. laughs> Bumble, okay. and I did Tinder just oh, because, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the same ones I have. Okay, so okay. Which one did you do first? Is my question. Oh, I did them all at the same time, same which time. was way too much. But anyway, so because as he said, as a female, when you do put up, like, you know, because I put up my nice pictures and whatever, yeah, so yeah. I was getting a lot of likes, right? But I had those three sites, and you know what, Bumble was the one where I found the most guys, to be honest, which was interesting because, yeah, I found the most guys on Bumble. What, in, in, in what, what way? In I guess it's because Bumble makes the female make the first move. Mm -hmm. I find that the, the higher quality females are on Bumble, mm -hmm. which is very interesting because it's, it's like we don't have to worry about openers. Mm -hmm. Usually, like, you match with someone, you have to. What's a clever? What, women get 10,000 hi, how are you? Hey, beautiful. Yeah. So how do I stand out, yeah. right? Yeah. But you know what's funny? When I would do my opening, I wouldn't put any thought into it. I just put like, hey. Woman, uh, women's <laughs> openings woman, women's <laughs> openings are the absolute worst. <laughs> women have no... Get, we have... But here, the interesting part is this, though. Is women... Sorry, men would put probably 100 times more effort into that opening line. Mm. But females would put... Would look would spend ten times more time looking at a profile before swiping right. Like women would actually read their bios, yes. go through the whole pictures. Yeah. Da, 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 da. How the first picture could be a lie. The first yeah. picture could not even yeah, be how they lie. look. So you want to kind of see, okay, do they have more than one picture? Is he consistent? Does he look the same? Does he look better in some pictures? <laughs> yeah, yeah right. you, you got to do your research, yeah. right? Yeah, and and then but when it comes to that first line, it's like, hey, I do get some that somebody asked me today. Uh, what is she? Someone messaged me today, and they, they're like, "How do you unwind?" The, her first line was, um, "How do you unwind after an especially rough day?" I'm like, that's, that's an interesting. That's an interesting opening. It's an interesting question, interesting. but it almost. You guys think, both think it's interesting. I think it kind of I sounds mean, out of a book. It's like a, a it doesn't sound like. It sounds like she's copying and pasting yeah. and yeah. saying that to every match she gets. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't sound that natural. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah, it just doesn't sound natural at all. Should I ghost her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm not going to tell you what to do there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you whether to ghost her or not. I know, getting back to the original conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, I but have a question. in yeah, terms of... Or they send GIFs. GIFs are a good opener still. You know what? I like GIFs just like as something during the day, like just a message. Instead of you just being like, hey, how are you? Hey, yeah, what are yeah. you doing? Da, da, da. I'm, I like a funny meme or a funny gif mm -hmm. because then i'm like okay i um our personalities are similar we find the same things funny i actually like that you know rather than just the same you know the same repeated things or something yeah. that sounds out of a textbook like exactly. you can so see that from a mile away right Definitely. but when i was saying before sorry going back a little bit to what you said before when um i was saying i was rolling my <laughs> my eyes a little bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. because you were saying guys are tired of trying I that really um, that really that really irks me a little bit because I feel like wh what are we okay we're you know people you know in our you know late twenties early thirties what whatnot and we're tired already like come on like like it's not it's not I think a lot of people also make it seem like it's so bad and so hard and sometimes I think it's all in our heads and we're making it harder than it really has to be you know 
but I was talking to my boy here. He's getting something out of my hair. Yeah, yeah. For any people watching, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, he's just getting something in her hair. Roll the film. Yeah, roll. Um. Oh, one of the things that me and you were talking about uh, is um, the, the we're spoiled for choice. Like, there's so much choice that, like, if for if, for, for both parties, oh, I mean, oh, I you know what I mean? We are. We are now. You, this, you don't think that? I I feel like there's so much choice that it's like one one little thing that wrong me the wrong way. Yes. I'm gonna go back to swipe it. I'm, I have I'm un- like, you, you unmatch. You know you yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wait, wait, we say one thing, okay? So yeah, so we did have this conversation before, okay? About being spoiled. But the, the conversation was women are too spoiled. Uh, Wasn't that men were too spoiled. The reason why, I'll tell you why. And you can, you can disagree or, or agree. When you go online, like you said, you put it on for an hour. Mm-hmm. How many likes are you getting? 100, 50, 10, 20? A guy will wait days to get one like. Get really? one like. Remember this, you have the average guy, and you have the guy who's above average, and you have the super guy, yeah. okay? Yeah. The super elite is going to be getting maybe as much likes as an average girl is getting, okay? okay? Oh girl, it's probably much less than, than a regular girl, okay? The reason why is guys have an average. Mm-hmm. Guys and women, we have these things called qualifiers, they have to qualify for us to say, you know what? I want that girl mm-hmm. or I want that guy. Mm-hmm. The threshold for women qualifiers are much higher, yeah. right? The threshold for men, it see, it go, but for some guys it's higher. But mm-hmm. the threshold normally for the average man is very low. I can tell you I know a lot of guys that just swipe, 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 swipe. They don't look. They go, wherever I get, I'm just going gonna, gonna to take. And they'll swipe oh, through 100. Yeah. A hundred different yeah, profiles yeah, that, that is just the, to grab one, but then, right? But then what is your motive to be on these these dating sites? Is it just to slam? Like, yeah. is it just like, because why would you just be swiping? Yeah, why would you just be swiping, swiping for everybody? It's a numbers, it's a numbers game, right? Is what you're going to say. Yeah, for, for some guys, mm-hmm. not for me. The majority, yeah. the majority. Now, I come, I come from a technical background. I understand like, uh, like software and this mm-hmm. stuff. And Tinder, especially Tinder. Would pick up on those things, the, and it would say, "Okay, well, I personally only swipe on girls I would really like, mm-hmm. and I find that it gives me better quality girls. girls. I go. swipe left a lot, but there's guys I swipe, 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 mm-hmm. and they also get shadow banned. They don't get put in front of people. They don't get as many matches. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're always trying to hack." Uh, Tinder. Tinder has spent millions and millions of dollars on research and development so that their app is the best. They know they have um, uh, facial recognition and they have uh, they can tell uh, like an actual rating from one to ten where you stand. Oh my so if you're not a really decent, good looking guy, you're not gonna even have the chance to swipe on hot girls. Wow. Yeah. But you know, I'll be honest. Sometimes I go on these apps and I'm like. No, 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 no. And I'm almost thinking yeah. like, like to yeah. get someone that I actually want to swipe, yes, is I have to like probably do like 30, 40 no's. Yeah, yeah, because I also, they also, they're here's, where they, here, here's where the, um, the, 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 the revenue, the, the, yeah. the way these apps make their money. So Tinder makes their money on, on top matches, mm-hmm. right? It, it, they know the hug, they know who you like. And they'll pack. He'll they'll package it up in groups of ten, and if you want to see that group of ten, it's three ninety nine. Oh my! I'll, I'll 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 show you right now. So it's called Top Matches, right? It's it's very interesting how all those these things work. And now people try and hack it. Yeah. They um and also like you Tinder has um like a like a rating system too. Mm-hmm. They they see how much how long your the females are staring at your pictures, going to your profile when they oh, swipe. Wow. What pictures you like, and based on that, it gives you a rating system. Back in the day, guys used to be able to hack this, yes. and and say, okay, well, I am a white male, for example. I'm not, but let's say yeah. a, a white guy would have a high uh, sexual market value in Thailand. Or like, I'm a white guy, but I don't like. I'm not in Philippines, but I'm gonna 
put my location in the Philippines. So the girls in the Philippines look at a white guy, they're all going to swipe right on me. Oh. And that's going to bring my Tinder ranking up. When Then I change my location back to here. And now, I, and now I'm going to be at the top ranking of Tinder here. But Tinder is very like on the game, and so they they understand. But like, they have all these little tips and hacks. Personally, every I people go crazy, spend time trying to figure out the algorithms. For me, it's like I see a girl I like, I swipe right. Yeah. But I know like they do package it up. Like for example, let me just I'm just gonna show her a visual. Yeah, so I'm just gonna show her. I'm I'm on Tinder right now, and I'm gonna show her the likes that I got. So it's like 163 likes. Right, and you can see like not necessarily the, the best, yeah. the best of the yeah, best, right? Like this is like if you're just a, a guy that cares about like numbers under your belt, yeah. this is where you go. But yeah. for somebody looking for quality, you have to go to top picks. Now that's oh. okay. Now for purposes of yeah. of the podcast, I'm just gonna or, go ahead and order ten. Okay. Right? It's, what? Like how much is that gonna be? It's gonna cost me. Three ninety nine. Fuck! I'm just gonna buy it. Wow! And imagine how many. I can imagine a lot of guys probably do buy. It. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I personally haven't bought any of those extra things. I'm like, I'm just doing whatever's free, right? Because you're a girl. Yeah. But let me put it this way: I just spent three ninety nine. Okay. Now, three 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 ninety nine. It gives me like ten. Yeah, you, you can already see the difference. Right. The, the difference. This is high quality. Now. In terms of, and I would say like high quality in terms of looks. Yes. Like yeah. they're better looking girls. Way yeah. better now. Um, do I spend three ninety nine on getting the possibility of matching with these girls, or do I go to a bar, spend a hundred dollars, and maybe not meet anybody? So it's really like, or go on a day and then get ghosted, right? Like this guy's way prettier than but all of this. But like, I guess what it is is that you're paying basically just to be able to match with these girls that are a little bit obviously better looking than the ones that you showed me prior. Wow. But it's so interesting how these apps work, eh? It is crazy. But what I did is I actually went on, I made sure I went on at least two dates from each app. So I did it for a month. Mm. I went on seven or eight dates, right? <laughs> In that month. So it was a busy month. Yeah, then, lots of free food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, no, wait, wait. Yeah, sometimes it was coffee and stuff, oh, right? Yeah. Like, like some guys would say, well, let's meet at Starbucks and stuff like that. Yeah. But then sometimes what would happen too is that I would meet the guy and then after we have, they'd be like, oh, are you hungry? And then we go to eat. You know what I mean? Mm. Right. And um, actually with one guy, I was meeting him at Yorkdale and I, I told him what I was wearing because I wanted to make sure he could meet, meet, meet up with me. I was wearing yellow pants. I like bright colors. Right. Yes. And then I told him and then I said, oh, what are you wearing? And I noticed he didn't respond for like three minutes. Right. And I'm thinking, OK, this is weird. I'm like thinking, oh, am I going to get ghosted on this meetup? Right. What? But then. Know. But then he goes, oh, I'm wearing, all of a sudden I saw him, right? Oh, I'm wearing, you know, green or whatever. And then I said, and then later on, like we had a nice evening, whatever. And later on I said, oh, you know, why did you wait a little while to message me back? He goes, to be honest, he goes, I've gone on a lot of these dates and the girls look nothing like their picture. Yeah. He goes, when I saw you, then I messaged you back. And I was yeah. like, holy crap. Because imagine if like I wasn't what he expected, he probably, he would just leave. He would have left. It's smart, man. I've wasted time and money with the wrong person. It's bad. The catfishing game over and the catfish and the fish is bad. Wow. Like the, the, the old fish too is like, yeah, that's you five years ago. Mm. And, and you know what? I think I'll be honest, I do think that is wrong. It is wrong because you're giving a false view yeah. of how you actually look yeah. right and the person's gonna see you eventually so what did you think you thought that because you spoke to them for a while they're not gonna mind that you're yeah. 50 30 50 pounds heavier or mm. this is obviously an older picture of you yeah yeah so what i'd like to know is would it be considered ghosting if they don't look like their picture or is that called false advertising I say it's a bit of column A, a bit of column B because <laughs> because if you leave, like I thought about it and I went home and I actually told my mom what he said because I just wanted to like, I just told my mom because I thought it was interesting, right? And then she said, well, you know what? I could see his standpoint too because he's probably feels obligated then to still go have a coffee with this person or whatever they had planned to do. And it's kind of misleading, right? So yeah, I think it's a bit of column A and a bit of, a bit of column B. I it's probably a little harsh, but can I say I blame them? Not necessarily. I had a situation. 
sorry. I, I had a situation like that, um, I think in July, mm -hmm. and I saw her from far, and I could tell that was her, but I could tell it was a little fat fishing going on, all right? <laughs> fat fish. It's catfish, and it's fat yeah. fish. Catfish is a completely different person. Fat fish is like, you kind of work the angles really well, like, uh, you know what I mean? It's, and like, it's not fat shaming. It's just like, I, I went in expecting something else, right? That yeah. I would go, and but I- They don't post any pics of the full yeah. body. So- I, I'm gonna be come, come true here. I mean, I did ghost her after, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't have the heart to she not, not cause she, I could tell she spent time getting ready. getting ready, driving probably half an hour. So I still bought her a drink, yeah. spent time. I met, I was very nice and polite, yeah. but even after that night, she messaged me back saying how she had a great time and she wanted to see me again. Yeah. And, you just and I just kind of like just left it on read. Uh, on WhatsApp, on red. on red. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna read what the actual definition of ghosting is. Oh. Okay, here we okay. go. Ghosting: the practice of ending a personal relationship with someone by suddenly and without explanation, withdrawing from all form of communication. Mm -hmm. That's what ghosting is. Yeah. It's really funny how we just talked about uh, fat fishing. Mm -hmm. I I've think. Never heard that. Never like heard I said that. it right now. Yeah, does, does it make sense? It makes sense. I know. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. So I think guys are getting more wise to these tricks that these women are playing. We know what that means when you're taking a picture from the sky high like a helicopter. Mm -hmm. Don't think you're fooling us, okay? We know you're doing it from the top down because you're trying to hide something. I think we're getting more wise to it. Um, I would. My question for you is, do you think that people are more... Uh, genuine in what their pictures are now versus back in the day you said this is the first time you've been on a dating app before right mm -hmm. have you ever looked at other people's dating apps like years ago like maybe like lava life or like maybe the inception of like plenty of fish maybe like black planet, black <laughs> planet. that was yeah. like i've seen some of my other friends pages on black yeah. planet but i didn't i don't even think i had a black planet That's planet page yeah. either no i didn't but so, i knew some of my friends that were on black planet <sighs> A lot of my guy friends yeah. would show me their like girls that they're like hooking up with on Black Planet. Wow. <laughs> how so does I'm that? How does it compare? How does Black Planet and and apps from like was like is that ten years ago, eight years ago? Yeah. How does that compare to the apps of today? Honestly, I would have no idea because as I said, I wasn't really on it. Um, but I think kind of like what you guys were saying a little while ago is that now the apps of today I feel like everything is just so quick it's just a swipe right it's just a swipe left and um it's kind of like as you guys said too we're spoiled all of us are spoiled the men are spoiled the women are spoiled we're all just kind of like oh, okay this person doesn't have this boom no like it's just like because we know tomorrow we can get 10 10 new people on our feed right but then it's almost like we're not probably giving enough people a chance as well. Whereas I think probably on the earlier platforms, you probably took your time a little bit more and gave people more of a chance. And also there wasn't the same volume of people on it at that time as well. So full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so full disclosure, guys. I was on a dating app I remember when Plenty of Fish was just uh, the first, uh, just first came out, Plenty of Fish. That may have been like, what, maybe like eight years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was one of the first things I've been on. It may have been my first dating app I've been on. Mm -hmm. I feel like back in the day, people were more honest because they thought that if you put a fake picture or a fake profile, people will call you out. Mm -hmm. So... Matches were a lot easier. The conversations were a lot easier as well. And because there was less people online, the qualifiers were a lot lower. Mm. Meaning, I didn't have to have three cars, ten houses. It was yeah, like... I don't think they're that right? high. But right? Unless you're going for, like, I don't know, some video vixen or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, my question is, have you ever... Put your qualifiers to a, a minimum and just seeing what you get instead of saying they have to have ABC because you already have ABC yourself. Mm -hmm. 
I've ever put my qualifiers lower. Um, I think I've just changed my qualifiers with, you know, age and wisdom, right? But I don't think that they're lower because I think when I was young, you know, when you're young, you want like the baller, the cute guy who's like on the basketball team. Like I grew up in Scarborough. So the guy, maybe he went to like Banyer or MT, you know, and, and those are kind of the ones I was interested in. Right. And but, you know, we were kids. You're young. Right. Now my qualifiers are a lot different. You don't even necessarily have to be the best looking guy. I'm looking at a lot of different things. I'm looking at, I'll be honest, when I look through the thing, I'm looking at what do you do, right? Mm -hmm. Because honestly, girls, let's be honest, they're looking for someone that can provide as well, right? That That's just I being real. Yeah, that's just being real. Girls are looking for someone who can provide. You are. I do want someone who's good looking enough that I'm not going to be shamed to walk down the road. But like, you know what I mean? But as long as I find something attractive about them, they don't need to be a 10 out of 10 for me. I'll be honest in look the looks department. I'm more looking at um, also just how you obviously you can't see this on the profile, but how you are as a person, what you wrote down that you're interested in, what you like, like if you're religious, if you're not religious, like all of those things are things that you you because for me personally i like you know believe in higher power but i'm not super religious right so if you put that you know if i'm not gonna go on christian mingle you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so i'm looking for certain things right um but they're not necessarily what i looked for 10 years ago okay these are all great answers i'm gonna bring the conversation back to ghosting <laughs> okay so i have a question here have you ever been ghosted? No, let me go back. Mm -hmm. How would you tell a guy that's been ghosted to respond? Like, how does he get over the ghost? Can and can you ever get over the ghost? Is, okay, I, I actually, I did send a message uh, in hopes to overturn the ghosting. Mm -hmm. I've done that. Um, and I, I'm, 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 I'm going <laughs> and and I actually, I'll send you, I'll send you the message. Uh, you just give me one second. Um, but I think sometimes the guy realizes why <clears throat> the woman possibly ghosted them. Well, I, I, I thought I was getting ghosted recently. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone on like countless dates this whole summer, the um, single, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this one girl that I, I it's always that one girl that you really like mm -hmm. that you start like getting. You do too much. Yeah. To go overboard. Yeah. So it's, it's weird how that works, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, all right. But, but back to your point, you know, with, with the how point. Do you it? How do you overturn it? And can you? Oh, okay, yeah. But back, circle back to the the first point where where your 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 um points of interest, because there's a saying that goes, you know, women are sex objects, men are success success objects. Women, especially when they're in their prime, twenty to twenty five, mm -hmm. they're looking at a guy's social status and looks. That's it. They don't really care about money so much because they want to know who this guy knows for partying you know he can get me into the best clubs yeah. uh he's good looking mm -hmm. how many followers he's got those things really matter 20 to 20, 25 to 30 or, 30. Yeah. Or, or 35 those things start fading away and it's more like okay now what does he do for he's kind of like the looks are up here at the beginning uh, 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 like he's really up like yeah from 25 I, like to from 25 to 35 yeah it's when they start looking at okay what does he do mm -hmm. is he family oriented you yeah. know what i mean is yeah. he is he like how much baggage does he have like this yeah, is the, have all the, the kids, you know all, all this divorce yeah five kids yeah i don't even like you know what maybe i'm also biased because i've been divorced myself but i wouldn't even necessarily see divorce as a bad thing but if i could get someone that had no kids and wasn't divorced hey that's probably the best yeah. like, like like that's ideal right yeah. but then also in, in saying that i'm also kind of saying i'm not that yeah. ideal right yeah, but so but i realized that the older you get you do have to be realistic because by the time people are 30 or over chances are they have some baggage. shit, some baggage. And the thing is, I shouldn't say shit because obviously, you know, like, like, let's be real. Like kids are not obviously I don't mean kids are shit yeah, or something like that. But what I mean is that they have something, whether it's just past even just bad experiences that they've had, you know, in some way that they now carry into their next relationship or as we said, or perhaps like, you know, a few children, perhaps a divorce, perhaps some. Um, alimony they have to pay to an ex-wife especially if they're you know so there's all of these different factors that we have to consider like a little bit later and kind of accept as well because everyone's gonna have something for it, right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so I, okay so all great here my next question here 
At what point do you know as a guy that you're being ghosted? Is it after the first hey, the second hey? Is it a, is there a time interval that passes? Mm-hmm. And as a guy that's generally interested in a girl, mm-hmm. right? Do any of these women take responsibility for almost luring him into this lullaby and then just kind of leaving him there yeah. in that state of abyss? Yeah. Both both sides. That was a loaded question, so I'm That's trying to think of which part to, to, to answer first. Actually, I do have a case study for you because I'm trying to overturn a ghosting. I'm trying to overturn a ghosting situation. Uh, and I want you to kind of like, off. like help. Do you have to take off? Yeah. yeah okay. I'll come back if you guys are still doing Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I got to start ghosting. <laughs> He's going to ghost us now? <laughs> but um, it, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, bro. Have fun. <laughs> We're going to continue. <laughs> yeah. But um, so what was the question? You you you, you had a, you, you said something? Um, so, okay. So the, the question is, so as being someone who keeps on getting ghosted, right? Is there anything that women are doing wrong? Like, what's the ratio of guys ghosting women versus women ghosting men? And the next thing is, what do guys usually ghost a girl for? Is it after they have sex they ghost? Mm-hmm. Or has it, does it happen before? Mm-hmm. And what would be the reasons why maybe you or one of your friends have been ghosted as a female? Mm-hmm. It's a lot of uh, moving parts to that question. I like yeah. it. Well, I can't even remember everything you, you said, but I'm going to answer what I can remember. I'll send you, I'll send you a picture. Yeah, please do. Please do. But um, in terms of um, why, what was the last part of that question? My God, it was so long. Have any of your girlfriends been ghosted other than for sex? Oh, okay. Well, I think the general consensus is that most women feel like when they're ghosted that it's you usually after you know you've had sex with this guy right but i think that often sometimes it can also be the same reasons why men get ghosted um the woman may just be doing the most maybe doing too much maybe like hey hey how are you doing oh do you want to hang out today do you want to hang out tomorrow like just going overboard because i think that it's so easy when you do find someone out of all these people that you've been trying to match with and whatever that you actually have a connection with you want to then like you often without even thinking end up doing probably more than you should you know pushing a little bit too hard trying to plan this vacation so quickly and you've met them two weeks ago right these things yeah, fast forwarding, because I think everyone's gone through that, too. And sometimes the person comes with you and sometimes the person kind of goes, eh, like, let me put the brakes on because I'm not ready for all of this yet. Right. And that can lead to ghosting because perhaps they're just not there. Perhaps, you know, as we talked about, they could have an ex that, you know, kind of came back in the picture and that's why they ghosted you. Right. Um, so the reasons can be there can be so many reasons, but I think often it's that we get ahead of ourselves. We start putting too much expectations on people that we really just met. And um, yeah, I think that really, obviously we don't want to be fake and not show that we like people when we do, but we really just got to watch ourselves and make sure we're not falling too fast and make sure that the person is coming with us and that they're not being left way behind. It's, uh, it's interesting because... Um I made a decision because we were talking about being spoiled for choice. And, you know, usually like I would have a date and I'll go home and I'll go back to swiping, even if it was a good date. Wow. Uh, it was uh, it was just a bad habit. Mm-hmm. It's just because it's what you do when there's, you know, it's almost like you can have unlimited free food, free fancy food. So you go eat a nice meal, you come home and you start looking at the menu for tomorrow. Right. Like it's very it's very different. But yeah, it's a, it's a it's a microwave culture. So we so I decided to say I'm gonna take it one girl at a time, Good. and <clears throat> and I just so happened to match with this girl. Mm-hmm. The, um, that honestly, out of all the dates, she's the one I really liked the most. Wow. I was really to go the distance. We went on a first date, and then we went on a second date. Mm-hmm. Second, uh, and this is the only time that I didn't try sleeping with her. I didn't try kissing her. Nothing. I was just playing the long-term game playing to win mm. not just playing not just going to see you know just not just just gaming her but I, I actually think that she she was worth my time mm. uh but what was interesting was that you know i don't like fast forwarding 
but she was the one fast forwarding. She was the one that was saying, you know, we went to a place called the rec room. Mm -hmm. And, oh, yeah. and yeah, and it's basically a thing where you load it, you have a card, you load it up with points, and you can just play points. Yeah. It's a very fun thing um, to do on a date. Yeah. I always recommend guys do three things on a date. Uh, the date, the, at first date, you have three aspects. You should have a meeting component, mm -hmm. a bonding component, and like a closing component. So it's like you, we meet at a bar, yeah. we switch it to a, a comedy show, oh. we switch it to a live music thing. Because then the, the meetup happened, let's go to a bonding experience. Because we met at this bar, we're going to bond, maybe even at another bar. Mm -hmm. But it has to have these three things. So then by the end of the night, you have this whole experience, yes. this whole night full of good experiences. So <clears throat> so that's what I did. So we went to, I actually booked, um, I got a tickets for some event that happened. And then we went to the game room. Mm -hmm. And I remember on that card that has all your points, it was on points left. So I said, should I just be nice and give it to some random stranger? You know, when you do that, yeah. you go Dave and Buster's. It wasn't Dave and Buster's, but it's like Dave and Buster's. And she said, no, no, when we come back, oh. we can use those points again. Mm -hmm. just, and then I said, okay, cool. What are you doing? It was also on a Saturday. What are you doing Monday? I got to work at four. Mm -hmm. And it was Thanksgiving. So I said, okay, well, why don't I just take you for breakfast and lunch? Yeah. So yeah, no problem. Okay. Well... Sunday night came, and we had a really good date. Sunday night came, and... Uh, you mean Monday? No, Sunday night came, and... Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, she messaged me saying that she has to cancel for Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was kind of taken aback, but I was like... I was taken aback, but I was like, okay, uh, that's fine. I hope, you, you know, I hope you're feeling better. And, uh, and then after that, it's just one word answers. And that's why today being Sunday now, and guys, she kind of just gave me the cold shoulder. She said me she's working this weekend. Mm. So I think I'm getting ghosted. Um, so I actually try to overturn it, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think that's going? You think she's ghosting me? You think there's something else in her mind? Is there any reason you can, is there anything you can think of that you could have said or did? why she might be ghosting you because i think that often when people ghost us a lot of times if we really stop and think about it sometimes there is a reason right obviously sometimes it's things beyond your control like as i said like an ex coming back or you know just them just not being ready or them just really being on some like let's be honest some fuck shit um you know, and just not being ready for the kind of serious relationship that perhaps, you know, you were looking for with them. But um, a lot of times, too, if we stop and we think, you can pinpoint. So that's the first thing I do. First thing I would say to you is, can you think of anything you did? If you cannot honestly think of anything you did, then maybe it's something that has nothing to do with you, you know? Or she could just be legitimately busy. But you know what? No one, I think, is too busy to message someone they like. I'm going to tell you that right now. No matter how busy you are, no matter how busy I am, if I really like a guy, if I even just message him once and say, oh, hey, you know what? My day's really busy today, but I just wanted to say hi and make sure you're good. If I don't really care about you is when I don't really message you. So honestly, I know that sounds kind of harsh, but I'm being real. No, and I appreciate that. It's just weird because <laughs> I was very, I was really thinking that we had such a good date and oftentimes you know, I try to kiss them. I try to, like, take them back to my place. Mm -hmm. I was just very respectful. Mm -hmm. And because I, I, with this one, I wanted to, to play the long-term game. I was, I wanted mm -hmm. to, like, you know. You think you were too respectful? I, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just, here, I just have to do this real five, two minutes. Okay. But, yeah, I just have to, like, I can edit it out. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, no, no, no problem. <laughs> Do your thing. I know you're trying to work on our other pop-in guest, <laughs> other special guest. But, um, yeah, sometimes, you know what? Sometimes we, as I said, we think about things too much. Yeah, no problem. We think about things too much. Like, like with this girl, you should have just been natural. Like, if things are moving or if you feel like kissing her and you feel like she's going to kiss you too, then why not? Right. Um, 
I think that sometimes we just overthink things because you thought, okay, this might be someone that I can really be with. Now you're trying to be so respectful that you don't do anything. Because I've had that happen before too, where a guy made no moves and we went on like four or five dates and I almost had to be like, bro, like what is wrong with you? Like not even like a kiss on the cheek, you know, but he was just trying to be super respectful. And he actually said, you know, I was scared that you would just cuss me if I tried something. So sometimes we can be so caught up with wanting to treat this person, you know, and I think that's great that you want to treat them well. But um, I say just try to be natural, go with what feels right in some aspects, right? So yeah, that could have possibly been it. She could have just thought like, what's wrong with this dude but then you guys really didn't go on th that many dates so i'm gonna have to listen to your explanation as to why you think um she may be ghosting you all right sorry we just came back from a break i'm gonna edit this after we're just going back from a break um but we were talking about this situation where i was uh i've gone on a bunch of dates this one particular one i just actually decided take it one girl at a time and i met this one i really liked her we went on two dates the second time she seemed really interested um and and then after this, this the second day i just started getting one word answers and she canceled a third date and i'm trying to get a third date mm -hmm. and i feel like i'm being ghosted now i'm trying to overturn the ghosting mm -hmm. And I sent a message that was supposed to be funny, lighthearted. And I'm going to have you read that message. Don't read it out loud. But you're going to see um, kind of like her reply to it. I, you know, and uh, it's very interesting because this is probably the only girl I've met this whole summer that I actually would have dated and gone the distance with. Yeah. My yeah. my message was kind of very clever and funny, and I can see, you know, you can get a reply from someone. Okay. I'm going to be honest. You should have just stuck with this message. And never say anything. And left it at that. I know, but um, at the same time, it's like, I really like this girl. Because I don't know if she's because testing me. She wants me to know that I'm serious. one is starting to sound, I'm going to be honest. You know, honestly, it's it's unfortunate, but at the beginning, it's a little bit of a, you have to manage how you sound too right because in the first one you said the same thing essentially as the second one that you sent the day after but the first one just sounded more calm and just normal and the second one sounded like oh like i really want you to message me back and let's be real unfortunately for some reason that kind of gives a little bit of an unattractive vibe no so but i waited a whole day for her to reply to my the, 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 my initial message and i don't usually recommend guys to to double. double text especially triple text yes i so just two is the limit. yeah two is the limit two unless the limit. unless unless she triple texted you you can triple text back <laughs> but when it when it comes to a situation like this just because of my experience with her i don't know if she's testing me i don't know if she wants me to work for it i don't know i did know you know do at this point no i, I think I, I don't know if i should just write it off at this point and move on oh um her response is three words three letters yeah it was kind of dry sup yeah it was pretty dry i'm not gonna lie like i think i would probably just i would leave it if she wants to continue the conversation she can let me sure i reply to the what's up no no eh you know what but then i feel like i'm gonna i really i honestly I must have met you like a couple dozen girls. So you know what? You're going to reply. So when you reply, just make it short too. Just and what should I say? Because what I was thinking was I saw, I was on my Facebook feed and I saw this, um, this Cirque du Soleil that I've been really wanting to go and there's nobody else I, I'm thinking about taking there than her. There's nobody I would rather go with to the circus than her. Is that too much? Yes. Yes. Because right now, she's really not giving you much in terms of the exchange. She's really not giving you much in terms of the exchange. She could say yes to that just because she wants to go to that because it's a, it's a nice event, you know? Um, I, I'm going to be real. I think you should really, you should not overdo it right now. I think you should just, you should answer back since I know you're going to anyway. Because but what? Because you read my message. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You so, want me to say what she said. No, no. It's just, it's just a sub. 
yeah. not even what's up just sup yeah but that's why i almost think i wouldn't even want to respond me personally yeah but like okay what well, that's kind of like the me- reply you will give to my message like because my message is like hey it's something along the lines like hey did you get kidnap- ki- did you get kidnapped like if they bring you back let me know send me a text back so i can because uh, i got something to ask you it's just for me it's like a hook i'm trying to get a hook and she kind of went fell for it and she gave me a little bit to work with but i don't i just don't know if i'm wasting my time now obviously now i'm, I'm back because i said i'm taking one girl at a time i'm back to swiping i'm back you know literally have mm-hmm. meeting someone so i mean i just don't know because i honestly i haven't felt like this for anybody and it's crazy because usually the way other way around girls just like Okay, so there's a saying. I think that's how it goes. That's how I think most people feel. It's you know, bullshit, it, right? Like you. We talked about this off yeah. air. Yeah, we did. Where it's like, I'm. You're. You were telling me that you're at a point where if you like someone, you're just gonna be upfront, and yeah. you don't know if that 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 usually backfires, which is bullshit. I'm past the point of pretending I don't like you if I like you. I'm older, like I'm yeah. old, and I'm 29. Like yeah, but then if they're not reciprocating that, then are you past? not having any yeah. self pride like pride or self respect yeah. like do you know what i mean because um and i think okay yes i understand you're past the bullshit right i don't think you should be pretending not to like anyone right but you need to match people's people's energy too though because if you're putting a lot of energy into them but then you notice but then you get a sub <laughs> sub after 3 messages that's sending uh, that's sending a little single signal me personally i wouldn't respond but i know you're going to so maybe just say maybe oh. maybe not because maybe i meet someone that's the problem a spoil for we're getting back to spoil for choice mm-hmm. because now i tried and i mean i can just go back and i have all these people i can that i match with that i can start messaging back and yeah. you know yeah. so you know what i'd say you're gonna message her back so message her back would be light do not invite her to start to soleil until she talks to you a little bit more than sup please let her at least so what should my next line be let me see it again <laughs> <laughs> honestly from from a scale of me liking this girl from one to ten it's probably a ten. Oh shit. she's got that thing you that it, you <laughs> it, but like i'm telling you it's like one out of like 50 girls i, I mean I i'm not like i'm not like out yeah. there You're not someone that likes every i don't girl. yeah you know, I've had amazing people, amazing dates, but this is probably the only one that I thought I could go the distance. Okay, well, you know what? You did say you have a question for her. That's why. Oh, crap. So either you're going to have to think of a different well, question. Well, the, the question was the hook to, to get her ask back. Her, or you're going to have to just ask her. Ask her what? Oh, oh, you didn't really have a question. No, it's just oh, a hook. Just, oh, I'm shit. a good salesman. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's coming in handy for you, yes. right? <laughs> well, now you're going to have to think of a question. Whether it's like, oh, you know are you free this day or i was thinking of hitting up this nice like um no 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 too nice for her right now with this up i'm sorry i don't know i think she like how many dates have you guys been on two uh, you think she already deserves certain to and i'm not like i don't know i'm not trying to be like if that's what i'm saying when people like someone they do too much because how much does that cost how much do those tickets cost uh yeah it's, it's probably gonna cost me like 100 200 bucks to get for for the for both, for both of us of yeah and then you're gonna go for dinner or something as well yeah yeah so that's like a three four hundred dollars so funny because the ones that i spent twenty dollars on i sometimes go all the way like i still mm-hmm. take them back here whatever mm-hmm. uh but like it's a, it's a saying that that says you know women are the key holders of sex and men are the key holders of relationships mm-hmm. you know they they have like if they want to have sex it's 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 all you can have sex tonight if you want to you just mm-hmm. you just can you have anybody really mm-hmm. and then but like relationships are hard to get for females guys are the ones that like are the key holders for, the key holders for relation so yeah. i thought that maybe me showing that i'll be open to that with this girl but like not you know, and it's interesting. I'm reading a book right now. I'm every book, every every month, I read two books. Oh, wow. Great. And the book I'm reading now, I'm probably three quarters in. It's called The Love Languages. Oh, I did a video on 
Yeah. Okay. Good. I didn't watch it. Sorry. Any everybody. Oh, by the way, what's your YouTube channel? Give a little plug on oh, shameless plug. Yes, sh shameless plug. Oh yeah, I have no shame. So I'll tell y'all. Okay, my YouTube channel is Danny Chang. That's D A N I C H A N G G. So double G. And I'm also on Instagram, Danny underscore Chang. Two Gs. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you follow her until I sent you there. Um, but well, follow, look at, um, yeah. So the love languages. All right. I did a quiz. My love language are um, um, moments. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, quality time. Quality time. Mm -hmm. So that's my love language. And then right after was words of affirmation and physical touch. Oh. For for this girl particularly, um, which is see, I'm I'm on this self discovery path because I went through a like a breakup that kind of just fucking fucked my brain uh for a while like you know and i went from being like a like a husband to like and i'm single now what do i do uh so i, I i'm taking all these new new things trying to apply them and so and I'm, i got overwhelmed mm -hmm. for this particular girl i didn't know until i read the book that this girl's love language is acts of acts of kindness mm -hmm. it's not receiving gifts it's not acts of service, acts of service. it's not yeah acts of service Unfortunately for me, um, because I was in a relationship that, that kind of ended because I was too too nice. That's the reality of it. I was too nice. Okay. Too easy. Yeah, she even told me that I was too easy, too nice. I can't. You're too nice. I feel like I can walk all over you. It really. It happened. And wow. yeah, it's, it's fine. Like I'm, I'm over it. But uh, because of that, it made me this fucking... I mean, there's, I could, I can send you so many screenshots of girls that call me an asshole, jerk, you're a piece of shit. I can't believe, and it's just because I became so numb and emotionless. Now, this particular girl, I just realized now that her love language is acts, exactly. acts of kindness. Yeah, I, because I came from this experience where I was too nice. Now it's she, hard for you to express that love language due to your past experience. Yes. yes. So she kind of wanted something, and I'm like, no, I'm not a little bitch. I'm, I don't, I'm sorry. I like, I don't let women uh, control me like that. Now that's the part that you didn't know. Yeah. So then she says something along the lines of what's wrong with me setting up my boundaries. So mm -hmm. then I went back and I realized like, Hey, you know what? You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think that is good for both of us to set up our boundaries. And if one of us step out of line, it's good that we call each other out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I overcome. But ever since that, I've been getting the one word answers and the kind of ghosting. Okay. So, so, have you ever addressed that? I haven't had the chance to talk to her on the phone or anything. I would say, so she said, what's up, right? Be like, can I call you? <laughs> you know what? Because, okay, because now that I know kind of, you haven't told me the detail, but now that I know kind of what it is, you probably, let's be real, you need to probably just apologize for saying that, right? Like, and I'm, I'm apologize, does she know that her your previous relationship, that was the reason why it ended? Yes. Okay. You told her that at that time? Uh, I think she probably must have seen a podcast that I talked about. Because I told her I had a new podcast and she heard it. Mm, okay. Okay. Because I would say that could possibly be it. So you just want to address the actual issue. Like, don't just try to cover it up by going to... Cirque du Soleil. You know what I mean? Like, address the actual issue and say, you know, I'm really sorry about that. But you know what? I, you know, was thinking um, of, you know, us going to Cirque du Soleil. And, you know, there's no one I can think of going with more than you. Because she likes that kind of stuff, right? In the acts of service and whatnot. So, um, yeah. Because, but then, hmm, hmm. No one, like no one I want to go with more than you I might be a little much. But you know what? I, you know what I mean? Like, just say that in a nice way. Um, but yeah, and you know what? If you did fuck it up, you did fuck it up. Like, you know, there's nothing you can really do. You have to just... Um, and now that I know more of the situation, I understand better. <laughs> and now I kind of understand why she's giving the sup. So... So maybe you can actually do that. Because I didn't know the whole situation. You didn't give me the whole situation. So... She, she's not a girl that cares about compliments. She, I compliment her many times. She's absolutely beautiful. She's a 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, she could give two fucks about compliments. Mm -hmm. she, 
his physical touch is not her thing either like uh, like the hags and stuff which is my I'm very touchy I guess it's a Latino thing that's yeah. your love language okay well, good that's my wait is that my top one or the second one all I know is I'm quality time and physical touch and they're okay. very close I know quality time is something for her but acts of service mm. because she's very into open the door and the, when I come into your car open the door for me mm. when I come out open the door oh, hold the chair so mm. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, I was just, my last engagement ended because I'm too nice. That, and yeah, like, I don't want to be bait. I don't want to be a little bitch. And it's, I'm sorry, sorry, but I'm, it's like we, you know, we go through a traumatic experience that kind of just mm -hmm. breaks us down that we have to start. It's like a, it's like a demolished building and we lay in brick by brick by brick. Yeah. And unfortunately, I'm, I feel like I have a good solid foundation, but there's still little things that need a little fine tuning here and there. And with this one, it was a good opportunity to maybe kind of have something positive, yeah. but because there's still some damage, yep. I kind of, I kind of shot myself in the foot. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, I was going to ask how long have you been out of your last relationship? Uh, it's going to be six months. It's gonna be okay. So let's be real. That's still really early because i am i just reached actually two years of being you know um not with my ex-husband anymore right and honestly if i'm being 100 it's probably only like now that i probably am fully ready to be with someone else or maybe even by like the year and a half stage you know what i mean but so sometimes I think what people do too is they rush into things when they're not fully, um, you know, when they're not fully over what happened and healed yet and done the work on themselves. But I love that you're doing that, that you're actually reading love languages because I, I did a lot of that as well. I even watched a lot of YouTubers that and um, podcasters that actually talk about, you know, um, relationships and. Um, Yes, because I kind of prefer even with books, like I would, I'm more the type, like I, I do read, but I'm more the type to like listen to an ebook or something like that, you know, like to kind of just hear it more so on my drive to work or whatever. Um, I just got, I just got it, got it now. But yeah, so I plan to do that. So if you have any good books, send them my way. <laughs> oh, okay. But you know what? Even viewing things from the male perspective is good. Because you get that insight, right? Yeah. That's why talks like this are so important too. Just getting the male perspective on relationships and also the female, right? Yes. Because we, as we, as we can tell, we think a lot of things are the same, but a lot of things are so different, right? We have a lot of, yeah, different ways of viewing, you know, love and sex and relationships, and um, our past experiences really do, um, if we're not totally over them and haven't worked through them and worked on ourselves. Um, can affect the future relationships and actually fuck things up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's good, man. I mean, it's it's every day you're laying a new brick, mm -hmm. and and uh, I mean, I'm I'm on this path of like still learning and mm -hmm. and doing all these things, and definitely reading those books are, is great. Mm -hmm. the The love language is very insightful, mm -hmm. and it helped me. And I just realized that maybe if I had read that book before, mm -hmm. again, my ex, yeah. acts of service. Oh. I shower her with compliments every day. Mm. Uh, and, oh, actually. But your ex was acts of service? No, no, no. Like nice. Sorry. Uh, no acts of service so much. I think it was also um, quality time. And uh, uh, I don't know if it was, I don't know, man. It's so hard. We, it was, so, we are, my thing with my ex, I'll tell you this. Um, it, I was. I think we were both each other's rebound. To be honest, mm. it was supposed to be. I don't think it should have lasted more than six months. Mm -hmm. I think she saw in me a guy that was probably better looking than her ex, taller, mm -hmm. probably making a little bit more money, mm -hmm. probably more family oriented, treat her better, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a big fuck you to my ex, mm -hmm. and kind of we kind of grew into each other, and it went to this thing. But in reality, we were never meant to be. Mm -hmm. That's really what I feel like. But regardless, it kind of, it really, it really hurt me at the end mm -hmm. and we were just trying to build. And then, yeah, I'm, I've, I've gone on so many dates and it just made me, it, made, it really 
like when you go through a situation like that, it's, it's what makes guys fuck boys. It's what makes them. Is this is what causes commitment issues? Yes. But then you gotta fight that urge, hey, fight that urge from being a fuck boy. Girl's gonna heal you, man. A and girl is gonna look at you and heal your heart. Like, yes, exactly. You know? There you go. Yes, I was gonna say you once you've done the work on yourself and you've actually gotten totally over the situation then you just view this new person with a new pair of eyes with a new lens not still thinking about what happened before or what went wrong with that person and all that kind of stuff because um i think that's what it is like when you said you know i don't want to do that because that's what i did in my last relationship this is not the same girl this is a different person yeah. that likes different things that has different love languages that is a different yeah a totally different relationship different experience so what we all have to try to do is not like limit the amount that our past um relationship experiences rear their ugly head in our current relationships because um am i gonna say that's never gonna happen of course not because we're, we all have stuff that is gonna affect something that we do but when we notice that you know nipping it quickly you know and realizing that uh this is something I'm doing because of that, you know, and trying to address that and communication with the new partner as well and letting them know things like that. Things like the reason why you guys, you know, even like once you guys get to that level, um, the reason why you guys didn't work out, because then when you act like that, they have a better understanding. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Let me see um, a couple questions here that I wrote down with, uh, with regards oh, to the, yeah. the whole ghosting thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but this is good stuff. I'm, I'm sure the the, uh, the audience would appreciate it. Uh, what is ghosting in texting? What is ghosting a friend? Is bread crumbing in dating? What is bread? I don't know what. Bread crumbing? Yeah. Just giving you enough to keep you coming back. Like kind of just giving you just a little bit. Okay, so that's called the, the, the string cut theory. Oh, okay. So you know when you have a string in front of a cat, they start playing with yes. it. But if you drop this, this string, it's just kind of look, look at it and be like, what? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. Uh, but you know what? Like, all these games are such bullshit. Like, oh, yeah. it's just like, like it, it drives me nuts. It is, it is. But at the end of the day, um, it is. But I think what we have to just remember, this is what I think is the easiest thing to say. Match people's energy. If the person is giving you one word responses, don't be sending them paragraphs. If the person is, if you're calling the person every day and the person's never calling you, stop. You know, match their energy. Because if the person is coming with you, they're going to reciprocate your effort. I think that's the easiest way to sum it up. I know that sounds so simple, but yeah, if you just stop and think, you know, is this person with me or is this person kind of like, ah, eh, you're doing the most, then maybe you need to even scale back a little bit, you know, because there's even been times where I really like someone and then I'll say something like, oh, you know, why don't we go do, I don't know, Montreal for the weekend. And then if they seemed kind of like hesitant, then I'm going to kind of not bring that up for a while, <laughs> you know? So sometimes when you realize you kind of do toe that line a little bit too much, just kind of bring it back a little bit, you know? So I think not everything is going to um, send you over the edge. It's really, I hate to say it, but it's a numbers game. And I don't mean talking to a hundred people at a time. I'm thinking you got to have to go through a lot, vet a lot of bullshit. Because eventually you're gonna meet someone. Because this is what happened to all my relationships. After a lot, bullshit, 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 bullshit. Met this person, the stars align, mm -hmm. everything is perfect, everything is great. And then you go through the honeymoon phase. Now, mm -hmm. the, whether it works out at the end or not, that's different. That's a different story. But mm -hmm. it really is a numbers game. Like you really have to go through a lot to meet one person. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important that we we really have to test each other out. We really have to see how the other person reacts on stressful situations. Mm -hmm. You know, there, yes. right? Like, yes. hey, go on vacations, spend a couple summers together before yeah. even moving in together. Take a trip. Look at how she re reacts when the waiter brings cold food. Like how she really is when she's mm -hmm. pissed off. When, when she she that she her I don't know. She got laid off. How is she? Mm -hmm. like there's so many stressful situations when you can really see the true side of it and you'll be like okay this is is this it mm -hmm. because everyone's on the best behavior on the honeymoon phase mm -hmm. and when the discovery phase but 
Yeah, man. It's just, it's just interesting, but yeah. All, all, all... I think the the um the part you said about see and the joke is that's why I like going on trips. But yeah, because I think that doing things together, um, but especially going on trips, because how long can someone fake it, right? Mm-hmm that's why when you live together that's when you see the real person right so going on a vacation is definitely a good test to see if this is a person that you can be with right because you're seeing them for at least a couple days you know 24 hours during the day so it's harder for them to hide their real self and how they actually act and even just the little things you know if they just throw all their clothes down on the floor like you know you're gonna have to clean up after them right so you kind of just catch all of those little cues and the things that you wouldn't see when you guys live in two separate places and just go out on friday and saturday or sunday to start the soleil or whatever <laughs> it's too funny but um on a, on a on a final note um is would, would you consider an, would you suggest an alternative an alternative to ghosting like would you concern would you consider um because we're so used to um people I, I i saw this meme the other day i can't remember the exact words but it said something along the lines of um people are so used to getting ghosted that expressing real feelings is coming out as rude and and something like that and you know i've been i've, I've done twice i've ghosted girls mm-hmm. And uh, it's 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 bad. Yeah. Like even even though even if we had sex, yeah. and maybe never spoke again, yeah. or maybe I after sex I was giving one word answers. Mm-hmm. It's bad. I admit it. It's not a. It's it's, it's just. I mean, no one's perfect, mm-hmm. and I don't mean to hurt anybody. I don't wake up in the morning thinking I'm gonna, I wanna you know. But it's been done to me. Yeah. But like, what do you think is the best thing to do? Say, hey, we went on a date. I. I during uh, at that time i was having a good time and it felt like the chemistry was right then we end up having sex and i just don't feel you anymore or, or ghosting so so why don't you feel them anymore is it because they had sex or is like what changed between before you had sex and after well i don't know i think there's uh there's a difference between really liking somebody and just being uh, uh, uh being a man and being a, being a you're, you're a man before you're anything else mm-hmm. Uh, when you're in a car with a girl, you're on a date. There's there's a ro- there's natural arousal that comes up. There's yeah. then you start kissing and then like get back to get back to the place. It's like a you're aroused, but it's not. It's like a high, but oh, it's not actual like. It, so you think even if you didn't have sex, you probably wouldn't have liked them after that, anyways. Exactly. Yeah, and I, and especially if I spend <laughs> money on them food and stuff. No, don't, don't tell me you feel like that's a fair exchange. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't ever uh, pay for anything <laughs> yeah. expecting to have sex. Yeah. Like, okay. uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not, I don't, yeah. but yeah, I mean, the first sex on the first date is not an indicator of anything. Mm-hmm. If, 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 if it feels right, it feels right. Yeah. And there's times where you have sex on the first day and then you start to keep seeing the people, the person, yeah. you know, or there's times where you have sex on the sixth date and then nothing, and then it's nothing just like, happens. and then nothing happens after. Yeah. There's a sex on the first day. It means shit. Yeah. It's just, it's just really the overall picture. Yeah. I agree. But Hey, on a final note that maybe we oh, should talk about. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say you forgot about the question yeah, yeah, because, um, Wait, your question was, um, Wait, um, oh, oh yeah, what's the alternative? Okay, so the alternative, I think, is the truth. That's the alternative, right? Um, and I think that after talking to someone for, you know, at least like a month or more, like, well, I think, you know what? Everyone deserves the truth. Let's be real. Everyone deserves the truth. But we've all done it. We've all had it done to us, right? Um, when it's been done to me in the past, actually, I've, um, wait, wait, sorry. I've actually asked before, like, you know, I'm just wondering, like, you know, I'm not saying I want to talk back to you or whatever, but I'm just wondering why so that I can make sure that I don't do that again in the future. Honestly, because I want the truth. I don't want to keep repeating same mistakes that I have before. I would prefer to get the truth, but that's my personality. And if someone asked me for the truth, I would be willing to tell them as well, because chances are if I actually ghost a guy because it's not something i do often you probably did something that i feel kind of fucked it up so 
you know, and there has been a time where a guy did ask me, you know, like, what's up? What did I do? And I said, you know what? Well, to be honest, you asked me on a date and like, you know, you, yeah. And, and like, and yeah, and you didn't pay. And, you know, for me, that is something that, you know, for the first date that you asked me on, um, I would expect that you pay. And the thing is for me, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that a guy has to pay all the time. I am not saying that. So please, the comments, don't go nuts. <laughs> say, <laughs> I'm trying to do that because trust me, by like, you know, like date three, I'd probably just offer. And if you let me pay, I'm cool with that. But I think with that initial first date, ex- especially in my case, because you would have asked, I would hope that you would um, pay and if you didn't it sends me a, sing- a signal that that's not something that, that honestly to me it sends me the signal that you don't think I'm worth it that you don't think I'm worth paying for so yeah so that's what I'd say about that <laughs> okay everybody I hope you guys like the show um, yeah it was great once again if you if you want to give me your uh, your YouTube channel and your Instagram and everything where people can follow you okay so it is Danny Chang, D A N I C H A N G G. And on Instagram, there's just an underscore between Danny and Chang. And on YouTube, you just search Danny Chang. So I hope you guys do check it out. I do have a video about um, the five love languages as well that you guys can check out. So, you know, just plug in, plug in away, plug in away. <laughs> but thank you so much for inviting me on. I really had a great time on your podcast. And yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for listening, and until next time, bye-bye. So dark, can't see a thing, I hear a song of the broken beat. Give me nickel, give me dime, give me doll, I'll give you a smile. Ah, oh, so dark, can't see a thing on the corner of the street.